This is a Warco WM240B benchtop lathe, which is very similar to a lot of other import lathes. The compound slide on these small lathes is a known weak point, which can contribute to chatter. For a lot of operations, you don't need the compound slide, so a common modification is to replace the compound slide with a tool post mount. In this video, I'm going to show you how I made a tool post mount for my lathe. I've put together this drawing of the tool post mount. It's made up of two parts, the tool post mount itself and the mounting stud. I'm going to work on the tool post mount first. The finished dimensions are 125 by 100 by 50. Ideally, the tool post mount would be 52 mil high to match the height of the compound slide. But I couldn't find any steel bars that were higher than 50 mil, so I'll have to live with adjusting the quick change tool post when I swap between the tool post mount and the compound slide. I'm going to make the tool post mount out of this 50 by 100 bright mild steel bar. It's currently about 128 mil long. The first job is going to be cleaning up the cut ends which are rough off the saw. In order to clean up the cut ends on the 50 by 100 steel bar, I've turned my lathe faceplate into a fly cutter. This 30 by 20 steel bar is fixed to the faceplate with some M12 screws. And then I've got a 12 millimeter high speed steel cutting bit attached to the faceplate by way of a 12 millimeter hole with a screw locking it in place. I've squared up the steel bar to the cross slide and I've fixed it in place with this mild steel angle. I've no idea how well this is going to work. I've never done it before. I suppose there's only one way to find out. I've got a dial indicator on the carriage so that I can keep an eye on the depth of cut. For the first pass I'm going to take a 50 micron depth of cut. This is the tenth pass and I'm going for another hundred micron depth of cut. This is the eleventh pass and it's just going to be a finished pass. I'm going to take off fifty microns. Okay, I've flipped the part around, now it's time to clean up this other face. I'm going to take a 50 micron depth of cut to start with. Finished cleaning up the saw cuts on the steel bar. In the end, I actually just took it to 125mm finished dimension and I got it within 30 microns, so that's 124.97. And then similarly on the other side, 124.98. Uh, I also got it nice and square, so I'm pleased with that. The surface finish isn't perfect, 
But for my first time using the lathe as a milling machine, I'm pretty pleased with it. The next job is going to be to drill the mounting holes. So there's four of them and they're 9 mil diameter and they're to go all the way through. So I'll blow up the surface of the steel bar and then I'll mark the locations for those holes. Now it's time to center punch the hole locations and to do that I'm going to use this optical center punch that I recently bought so that we can get a nice accurate center punch location. Just going to make those center punches a little bigger with a proper punch. It's time to drill these holes. I'm going to start with a 5mm pilot and then go up to the finish size of 9mm. take these holes up to finish size of nine millimeters. I've dropped the speed of the drill down to about a thousand RPM. Time to counterbore these holes for these M8 cap head screws. I've got the steel bar firmly clamped down with this angle iron, and I've got an M8 counterboring bit in the drill chuck. I've got the depth stop set to 8mm, which is approximately the thickness of the head on these screws. Okay, let's try that again with the chuck tightened up properly this time.
out that one badly. Not sure what happened with that last one. It looked like the block might have moved slightly. Maybe I didn't have it clamped down enough. And then the bit got caught in the hole. So it's marred up the top of the hole a little bit. I'm just going to clean it up with a 9mm drill bit and then try again. With those holes counterboard, now we can do a test fit on the cross slide. I've put the T-nuts in the slots. Okay, that seems to have worked really nicely. The tool post measures 73mm by 73mm. The tool post mount width is 100mm. So if I mount the tool post in the middle of the tool post mount, the tool post mount will extend 13.5mm beyond it at the front and the back. In order to improve clearance to the workpiece in the lathe, I think I'm going to chamfer the front and the back of the tool post mount. I'll chamfer it by about 13 millimeters and I'll do a 45 degree chamfer. I'll need to make the counter bores for the cap head screws a little deeper once I've done the chamfer, but I don't think that'll be a problem. So I'm going to re-blue the top of the tool post mount and scribe in the lines for the chamfers and then I'll get the tool post mount mounted up in the lathe again with the face plate and the fly cutter in order to cut the chamfer. I'm bringing you in part way through machining this chamfer. I've already taken off four millimeters. I'm aiming for a 13 millimeter 45 degree chamfer. Because it's 45 degrees, I know that my total depth of cut is 13 divided by root two, which is 9.2 millimeters. I've got a dial indicator on the carriage so I can keep an eye on that dimension and when I get to 9.2 I know that I should have my 13mm chamfer. Taking a 100 micron depth of cut. I've finished chamfering the front and back edges of the tool post mount. I got a slightly better finish on them than I did on the saw cut ends. I think that's because I used a slightly higher RPM. I've also deepened the counter bores for the cap head screws. Final thing we need to do to the tool post mount is drill this hole for the tool post mounting stud. I've got a dimension of 30 millimeters marked on the drawing. I've actually changed my mind about that. The tool post measures 73 mil by 73 mil. So to get this edge of the tool post to line up with the edge of the tool post mount, I'm gonna drill the hole 36 and a half mil off the edge of the tool post mount. So I'll mark the location of the hole with the surface gauge and then center punch it, drill and tap it.
before drilling and tapping the hole I'm just spending some time flattening the top and the bottom of the tool post mount using some 250 grit wet and dry paper stuck down to the base of my bench drill. I'm using a bit of WD-40 as lubricant and it seems to be doing a good job. I've tested it on the cross slide and it's sitting nice and flat and not rocking at all which is promising. I've finished flattening the top and the bottom of the tool post mount. Now it's time to drill the hole for the mounting stud. I'm aiming for 20 millimeters of thread depth. So I'm going to drill the hole down to 25 millimeters. I'm starting with a five millimeter pilot hole and then I'll go up to 10.7 millimeters, which is the tap drill size for the M12 by 1.5 millimeter thread that I'm using. I've lined up the spindle of the pillar drill with this punch, which has a cone ground into the end of it. So I've got the spindle directly over the center punch mark that I made. Okay, time for the 10.7 millimeter tap drill. I've reduced the drill speed to 1000 RPM and I've set the depth stop to 25 millimeters or one inch. Let's get this done. Right, that didn't quite go as planned. The tool post mount moved when I started using the tap. So I've had to realign it by putting the drill bit back in the chuck and getting it over the hole and I've reclamped the tool post mount back down. I'm gonna have to do this with a spanner instead of a tap wrench because these bits of threaded rod that are clamping the tool post mount down are getting in the way. Okay, I think I'm gonna take this out and put it on the bench. Now I think we've got enough thread engagement that it's gonna stay nice and true. I finished cutting the threads in the tool post mount. They came out nice and clean and crisp. So that's good. With that done, we can move on to machining the tool post mounting stud. This was the original design I had for the mounting stud, but it's not actually quite right. So I've redesigned it and done another sketch. 